the world. Facts of Fishing, the show, presented by Subway, eat fresh. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Live target lures. And Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. This week our hero will team up with Lake Erie smallmouth superstar Simon Frost to try and spoon feed some fall finned freaks of nature. Without further ado, here he is. I can't say this. Just read the script. The world's greatest angler, Dave Mercer. There's one. Oh, he hammered it and I missed him. We're not on the spot anyway. Well, listen, let's start on spots. But I marked a fish, so we had to try. Out here today with Big Red. <laughs> Very red. Well, good thing I left the red sunglasses in the truck. This fish ate it. Feels like a good one, too. Come here, dude. Oh, he's not coming up. There he is. Oh, that's good a good one. fish. That right there is a good, good fish. There is no better way, if you ask me, on a cold fall day to catch yourself some big Great Lakes smallie. Mm. This one, double. The jack of their head off with a spoon like we are here today. And as you can see, there's a few of them out there. A good one, Simon? It's a good fish. <laughs> Oh boy, you do have a good one, don't I you? I think so. Let me know if you need the net. I'll be a team player. Big fish. Oh, giant, giant fish. I got this one in my hand. I'm gonna net yours. That is a really big fish. Oh, there nice. you go, dude. That's a good double header. <laughs> when you only have a few hours in the afternoon, there's nothing better than chucking a spoon at these bad boys. It's incredible how these big smallies can group up in the fall. And you get on top of a group of them, lower a spoon, and as you can see, first hookup of the day is a double header. You can't beat that. You know, with this style of fishing, uh, it's not the kind of thing you do where you're covering a lot of water. I mean, you're literally fishing directly below the boat. So something we're doing right now, you can see Simon's moving us around. And when we see a fish, we'll stop and we'll drop on it. And you don't spend a lot of time searching for fish with your bait in the water. Your bait can sit in your hand and when you see that fish, lower it down. Oh, they're whacking at it. There's one. Nice. It doesn't feel as big as the other ones. Well, that's good. Those are the ones you're supposed to catch. Oh. You're not supposed to lose them, though. Yeah, a little too far away for me to say landed. Something you'll notice, we're both fishing a spoon, but uh, two totally different spoons. I'm throwing a striking sexy spoon, and uh, Simon's throwing a Bass Pro Shop tungsten spoon, which is a really small, compact spoon. And, and there's a reason we're doing this, and, and no matter what you're fishing for or where you're fishing, it's, it's kind of the approach that I think that most anglers should make, and that's use different baits until you figure out what's going on. You know, if all of a sudden I start whooping them on this spoon, he'll switch to a sexy spoon. If he starts whooping them on that spoon, I'll switch over. But until you figure out, until the fish tell you what they want, don't get set doing the same thing. You know, nothing worse than two guys going fishing and having the exact same bait tied on and just hoping that the fish eat it because uh, you never know. They change day to day. Realistically, they change hour to hour. Oh, smoked it. Come on back and get it. On the way down. You know, you wonder sometimes that they just swatting at it. I mean, you see the way that big spoon falls and you spend any time watching fish, you know, feed in, you know, Bass Pro Aquarium or anything, you know that, you know, we always just imagine that they're always grabbing it, but a lot of times you see how they dive in and boom, try to hit the side of it and stuff like that. That could have been that deal right there, but uh, never, ever, ever, you hear me say this all the time, pull your bait out of that area because he's still there. Keep it in there and you may get him. 
There's another one. Ooh, this is giant. Oh, I can't even move this. It's like a hooked bottom. <laughs> oh, 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 dude. Oh, he swiped at it. I got him in the back. But uh, another, another giant. They're absolutely stacked here today. This is awesome. This is awesome. We got a few hours to get out here and, uh, and get some fish. Before we hit the water, we were both talking, what, do you, what should we do? You know, should we go throw tubes? Should we, because uh, you know, that's the old standby, but uh, we decided, you know, let's go high percentage. Let's find an area where they're stacked, drop those spoons on them. Oh, and as you can see, it's working. You know, one of the real keys with this style of fishing is to pay attention to your line. <laughs> pay attention to your buddy who's hooked up and catching fish. Never mind what I have to say. Listen to the guy that's catching them. Yeah, we're just working our way up that line and uh, just working this spoon really, really slow. Feels like a good fish. I haven't really seen him yet. I see a big shadow yeah, down there. Yeah, he looks like a good fish. I think you've got a manatee. Oh, there you go. Decent, decent one. He had that spoon right in the corner of the mouth, just gently picked it up. We'll just keep plugging away. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. One of the keys with this style of fishing is really to focus on your bait when it drops. You know, it's easy to hook a fish on a spoon when you pull it up. I mean, if it grabs it right before you pull it up, you're going to feel it. But a lot of guys will, you know, be daydreaming. And one of the reasons that I use braided line when I'm doing this style of fishing is so I can feel that little thunk. So there's a bunch of slack in my line. I let it fall on a slack line. And with that braid, with very little stretch, I can still feel that thunk as they grab it. Focus on that bait as it drops, and you will definitely hook a bunch more fish. There's one. Oh, lies. Oh, the double header, another double. I He's know, gone. Big too. Mine was belly hook. Oh, oh look at this thing. This is giant, dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> dude. That's a fish. That is a mule. Ooh. Oh. There's one. <laughs> I'm unhooking this one. You oh, look into man. that pig. Oh. Oh, good, good fish. Just got a double header. Another really nice fish. Dave definitely got a bigger one on me this time. You just look at that mule. I mean, that thing, whew, gotta be getting close to seven pounds. Oh, what a freak. What a pinned freak of nature. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome fish. Fish like this are why people come out here and get bundled up in the middle of November and go fishing because fish like this are a realistic opportunity every single time. Whew. What a mule. Mm. I love it. So we've all heard about social media big shots like Ashton Kutcher and Tony Hawk. Well, now Dave is trying to become one. So make sure to follow him on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Closed captioning for Facts of Fishing, the show, has been provided by BoatSmart Canada. Get your Pleasure Craft Operator card online at BoatSmartExam.com. You know, far too often, you know, cold water fishing like this. Oh, there's another one! Are you kidding me? Far too often, cold water fishing like this gets, oh boy, this is another giant. It gets a bad rap for being something slow and, you know, just dragging tubes and stuff. Oh, I lost him. Oh, I was horsing him. I was, that was my fault, 100% my fault. I got a little bit excited there, but far too often fall fishing like this gets a bad rap for being something, you know, super sleepy, slow, dragging tubes and that sort of thing. But if you find an area where fish are packed, lower a spoon, and there really is nothing more fun than this. Uh, and it's really simple, really easy way to fish. I mean, you just get that spoon down to the bottom. It's kind of like, you know, ice fishing, but you're in a boat. 
same basic theory. You're on top of fish, and we're fishing in you know, 35 feet of water here. And all you do is lower that spoon down, let it hit free spool. That's why I like to fish it on a bait casting reel. Give a full free spool. Simon's fishing on a spinning rod. The one disadvantage is I probably, if I had a spinning rod, I would have kept that fish on because I got a little overzealous, but Simon is going to show you how to do it on a spinning rod right now. Another giant. Good fish. Good Another fish. big pig. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is a freaky fish. Oh no. Oh, yes. I thought you lost him, dude. No, that was some bait fish. You no, no, up. dude. You, the hook's out of him. I think we got to watch the camera afterwards because <laughs> I li literally think that that fish, because I don't see any bait fish, brother. Another big spoon fish. You know, fall fishing, absolutely fantastic. We pulled up on this spot, marked some fish, dropped the spoon down on their head, bang, double headers, awesome day. Here's one. We'll have to try and hand bomb this one. Oh, landed. He just hammered it. So with these spoons, most of them come with a good hook. I've changed it out for a great hook. Now it's a trocar trouble hook. Fish is only option if he hits that. Get in the boat. That's it. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's gone. No, he's still there. He's just swimming towards me. Oh, he's good. He's good. He just did like play the most extreme game of possum ever. Oh, he's a giant. He might be the biggest one. <laughs> I'd help you, but I got one too. Another double. Mm. Oh, mine. Lost mine. Oh, come here, don't jump. Jump into my hand. There you go. This one. Double. Let's see if I can land this one. Uh, you, you know you're in a good spot when, when I'm hooked up, you get a double going, you lose your double, and we've already got another double going. Uh, I'm not going to moose this one. This one feels huge. Have a look at this fish. Oh, and I'd love to stay and entertain you, but uh, I'm going to throw it over to Simon as he fights his. Oh, I can't gain any leverage on this fish. I'm here with the net, brother. Do I got time to drop my spoon and get another one? Oh, dude, this one's fighting me for sure. Look how hard he fought the whole way. Comes out, and it's not even that big. That spoon almost hit me in the head. And you got your Never mind the back. fish, who cares? That spoon almost took me out. It was like the Matrix. That was crazy. Get with your fish, I gotta catch one. Marking a bunch more fish, and throw him back, go get some more. Wanna make sure that I have this reel set up to free spool as easy as possible because with this type of fishing, I mean, like you see, we see a fish and we wanna drop it. Well, you wanna drop it as quick as possible. And if you have your VBS turned up on that reel, it's gonna slow down the rotation of how quick that line can go out of there. So make sure you got it on total free spool, keep your thumb on it. As soon as you see that fish, drop it down and get it right down there right away. And also, because the quicker you get it down there, you are also in a race with the guy you're fishing with. Don't tell him or anything, but you want your bait down there before his because then the fish will eat it. How you doing, Simon? Good? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, still looking. The only problem with these fish is they do move around a little bit. So when you catch a couple, you pull a couple out of the school, the school will move off with a little bit. Use your electronics, follow your graph. You can see we have our GPS track there. We're just doing a little bit of searching. We'll find the school again, get on them, catch a few more. There's one, oh, giant, smoked it, smoked it. Okay, I gotta calm down. Oh, it's another good one. Triple south for you. Oh yeah, we may want to throw a net on this dude. Yep. This thing's a giant. <laughs> Man, oh, oh, dude. Big, big, big. Look at that thing. <laughs> Look at the size of this freak right there. Oh, my word. They are absolutely munching the spoon today. 
in a big, big way. I love me some big, brown, sexy bass. <laughs> Everybody likes a nice bass. And that right there is a nice one. Ooh, I think I found Squatch. Bass Squatch. If that sun starts to drop, it gets chilly. Remember when we were catching them? You know, one of the keys with this style of fishing is, I can't stress enough, this is not something you do to cover a ton of water. This is something you do uh, when you have a specific area of fish. You know there's a bunch of fish sitting in one area and you can drop it on top of them and annihilate them. So once they stop eating, you gotta start moving. Once you stop seeing them on the graph, start moving, start you know, covering some water. And a lot of anglers have a hard time with that because you're actually not fishing. And you know, people will think, well, you know, they've all heard that old adage about um, you know, the, the best way to catch fish is keep your bait in the water more. Well, this is kind of the exception of the rule. This kind of fishing, you wanna keep your bait in the water, but you only wanna keep it in productive areas. You kinda of gotta think of it uh, kind of like dock fishing. If there's no docks in the shoreline, move along. Well, if there's no fish on the graph, move along and figure out where those fish are by idling around. All right, fish. Oh. Idle around, find them, and once you do, start catching them. <laughs> oh, well, this guy is no giant, but you know what? After the little bit of time we've had out on the water here this afternoon, oh, I can't stop. But smile, absolutely awesome. Are you hooked up, Simon? Yeah, I, <laughs> I hope he's not foul hooked. It feels like a giant. You're gonna show me up. It feels funny. I just caught a little punk. See, as you can see, this is a big advantage that Simon has. He fishes it on a spinning rod. And when you get a fish like this, you know, the drag's always gonna be smoother on a spinning rod. And you're actually, you're, you told me you're fishing five pound test. Why is that? I find it cuts through the water really, really well. Super thin diameter and the water doesn't bow the line up. You know, people say, oh, five pound test, you're fishing for big fish. I've never broken the braided part, not once. You should never ever say that on camera. That's true, I haven't landed this fish yet. He, he's absolutely correct. Just gotta be real careful. There you go, that's a good one though. We'll let her go, try and get a few more. I guess I never did put a hat on, huh? Nope. Oh, I had one. As soon as you get back on top of them. Oh, I didn't miss him. Giant. Oh, it feels big. That's because he is. Another. Oh, oh. oh, dude, dude, dude. This, this is crazy definitely. big. This is, this is ridiculous big. Oh my goodness. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Yes, dude. This thing is freakish. Look at the size of that mule right there. <laughs> Look how he ate that sexy spoon. Oh my word. Oh, dude, this thing. Oh, I missed one. This thing is a tank. It does not get any better than that. This day is officially gonna be called Pig Fest. Look at the size of the yap on this dude. Oh, I'll tell you what, these may be some of the biggest smallies I've ever caught in one day. Love it. What an absolute beast. <laughs> oh, crazy. This may be the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught on camera. Oh, I love it. This thing is freaky big. Freaky, freaky, freaky big. Oh, awesome.
Man, I hate when Simon is a guest on this show because these two always seem to catch him together. Simon and Dave fished for only three hours and nine minutes, made 218 casts, which resulted in 14 of the biggest smallmouth ever caught on camera. As much as I hate to admit it, what these two weirdos did today was pretty impressive. Their five biggest fish today would have weighed in at a startling 33 pounds. Holy <laughs> is that right, 33 pounds? Wow, and that's the score. Simon's bass whooping weapons today were half ounce Bass Pro Shops XPS Tungsten Jigging Spoon, fished on a 7 foot 1G Loomis NRX paired with a Shimano Stratic FJ, spooled up with 5 pound Test Power Pro Braid and a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. Dave also caught all of his fish on a jigging spoon, but he relied on the bigger Strike King Sexy Spoon. Fished on a 7 foot 6 Shimano Compre TC4 crankbait rod, paired up with a Shimano Corrado, spooled up with 30 pound Test Timber Brown Power Pro Super Slick braided line with a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now you have the facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, as another episode of this show draws to a close, I can't help myself thinking, imagine how many fish would have been caught on this show if it had been hosted by a real angler, like, say, maybe, uh, me.